Good evening and a blessed Christmas Eve and Christmas to all of you. We want you to know that Anse United Church is here for you at any time. Please call the office for anything, 519-986-3019. We have lovely children involved tonight too, so please stay tuned. Welcome everyone to this time of worship and celebration and pondering. Another COVID Christmas Eve is upon us, and so we gather electronically. It may not feel the same, yet to hear the stories of hope, peace, joy, and love. Even though we can't see each other, we know we are like tossed salad of varieties or a variety pack of breakfast cereals. Now, just as a joke, I called myself nuts and honey. What breakfast cereal are you? We come with different histories, different geographies, different ages and abilities, different perspectives. And yet we are drawn here and we invite you to settle yourself into your comfy chair or comfy couch so that you may enjoy this service. For tonight, the Savior is born.
Thank you, Caden and Grace. So lovely to hear you. And just a reminder, everybody out there, please bring your family and friends and young children. Ansley is alive and well. The four weeks that lead up to Christmas are called Advent in our Christian tradition. It is a time of preparing and waiting. During this time, we remembered the main messages that we find in the stories from Jesus' life. Hope, peace, joy, and love. We lit a new candle each week. All four of our Advent candles are now lit. All that remains is the big candle, the candle that represents Jesus. We call it the Christ candle. It reminds us that tonight is the night that remember the birth, we remember the birth of Jesus. The one who came to show us how to live lives of hope, peace, and joy. All our candles are lit. It is time for us to be light. Each of us, a tiny light that burns with hope, peace, joy, and love. Okay, tonight we hear the story of Jesus' birth and his life told in a different way through the eyes and memories of a shepherd who knew Jesus but who wasn't there on the night of his birth. The shepherd is old now and people come to hear him tell the stories that he remembers. Retelling the stories of Jesus is important so that we don't forget some of you will ask, well, is the shepherd's story true? All we can say for sure is that stories don't have to have happened in exactly the way we tell them in order for them to hold some important truths. Listen as our imaginary shepherd, Josiah, tells you what he remembers. Then you decide what the important truths are that the story tells you this night. Welcome, come close and keep warm. A night this clear is always as cold as they come. I should know, I've sat out in enough of them. 
In my job, you learn how to keep warm and still keep track of the sheep. We walk the hills all day, then we gather them in close around us at night. Would you like to join me? Of course there is enough room around our fire. Did you come all this way to ask me about Jesus? That is what everyone wants to know, especially on Christmas Eve. Did I know him? Well, yes, sort of. No, I wasn't there on the night he was born. And no, I haven't seen him since he's died. Still, I believe the stories that people tell about him. They say he burst the bonds of death. And one way or another, if anybody could do that, Jesus could. That man changed everything he touched. On a night like this one, I like to think about the things he said and did, not just about the night he was born. Sometimes I just sit and sing to the stars. Do you ever feel like that? Do you want to sing with me now? When I first met him, it was at the synagogue. The synagogue is where we go to learn the stories of our faith. At that time, Jesus was a grown man, and he was teaching in the synagogue. He was arguing with others about how important the law was, or wasn't, as the case may be. Sometimes, I like to listen to those smart people arguing. You know how much teachers love to talk. But Jesus was different. He wasn't only winning the argument, he was also using regular words, words like I use, words that I could understand. He said God was like a wonderful parent, someone who loves us all the time, not someone who judges us. I felt so comforted by what he said. But at the same time, he stirred me up inside. He made me want to be the best I could be. His words made me want to try to make the world the best it could be. I believed right away that Jesus was the one we had been waiting for, the one who would show us the way. And if he wasn't that one, then he sure sounded like the one that the prophet Isaiah wrote about and said was coming. Isaiah 61, 1, 2, 3. The Spirit of God is upon that one who God has chosen. God sends this one to comfort those whose hearts are breaking with sadness and despair. God sends this one to announce, be free, be free to those who are imprisoned by real walls or by walls of hate or fear or anger. God sends this one to proclaim the beginning of new possibilities, a time of joy and hope for all, when strangers shall become friends.
he wasn't exactly poor either, but the thing was, he spent all his time with people that nobody wanted to be around. He talked with women, and that wasn't right. He touched people who were sick and unclean, and that was downright dangerous in our time. He had dinner with tax collectors, and they are just plain crooks. Jesus acted like he was one of us. He seemed to understand how bad it can get for all of us. That's important to know because people called him a king. He didn't want to be called that, but if he was a king, then he was a very different kind of king than I'm used to. He was a new king to follow in the footsteps of a king from long ago, King David. That's why he was born in Bethlehem. It was King David's town. When Jesus was born there, it showed that even if he wasn't related to David, he was going to be a king like David was. Two, verses 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered in their hometown. This was the first census that was taken when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own hometown to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of Bethlehem. Joseph took Mary with him because he and Mary were engaged to be married and Mary was already expecting their first child. While they were in Bethlehem, Mary's labor started. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them to stay in the inn. Some things that blew me away when I hung around Jesus. I saw him heal people with sicknesses you thought were 100% incurable. I saw him pray for people who were miles away and somehow they got better. There have been people that they actually saw Jesus raise a man named Lazarus up from the dead. Now I am someone who believes in miracles and the power of prayer. I have seen my share of visions too. So it's not the angels that amaze me. That's not the miracle. The miracle is that the angels came to shepherds, people like me, to tell the news. You'd think the important people would have been the first to know, not some back hills underpaid workers like me, but that was just the beginning. Luke 2, 8 to 14. In the hills around Bethlehem, there were shepherds living with their flocks, trying to keep warm at night. Then suddenly, an angel stood before them, and bright lights filled the sky. And the shepherds were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that is for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a special baby, the Messiah, the Chosen One. 
one who will somehow save everyone. This is a sign that you should look for. You will find this special baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there wasn't just one angel, but a whole multitude, a flock, a horde of angels. They were singing a beautiful song, glory to God in the highest, heaven and on earth, peace and goodwill to all. I feel like singing that song now. different ways. One group didn't hear a word he said, like the rich young ruler who wanted to follow Jesus, but who wanted to keep all his stuff to himself. Jesus said he needed to give away all his stuff to the poor before he could really follow him. That young guy just went away scratching his head. Now there were others who really did hear him. They could tell he was talking about a whole new world order where power and privilege and money meant nothing. They didn't like that at all. So they plotted to kill him. But there were a few, just a few, who believed him. Hook, line, and sinker. And they gave up everything, and I mean everything, and they followed him. From Luke, chapter 2, 15 to 20. When the angel music stopped and the angels left them, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see if we can find what the angels told us. Let's see if we really can find a baby lying in a manger. They went quickly, and sure enough, they found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger, just like the angels had announced. They told everyone at the stable what they had seen and heard in their fields and everyone was amazed, except for Mary, who seemed to know that her baby was special. She just put that story away in her heart, where she remembered it her whole life. Then the shepherds went back to their fields, singing praises to God at the top of their lungs for all they had seen and heard that night. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise ones from the east came and said, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw a star in the sky that announced his birth, 
and we have been following it so that we can bring him gifts. When King Herod heard this, he and all the powerful people were frightened. What if Jesus took over? So King Herod asked all the smart people to, around him, What do you know of this special baby, this chosen one? And where is he supposed to be born? They told him that the ancient books said that the baby would be born in Bethlehem. Then King Herod called the wise ones back to him and said to them, Go and search for the child in Bethlehem. When you find him, send a message to me so that I can go and visit him also. The wise ones left King Herod and continued to follow the star which showed them the way. The star stopped over a little stable, and the wise ones were overwhelmed with joy. There they found the baby Jesus with Mary, his mother, and they knelt before him and honored him. They opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As they slept, they had a dream that warned them not to tell Herod that they had found the baby. So they went home by another road and didn't tell Herod anything about the baby Jesus. The ancient story is ours. It is the beginning of the story of Jesus in whose footsteps we strive to follow. We are called to respond to Jesus' life, Jesus who was called Emmanuel God with us. And so we do with gifts of time and energy and enthusiasm to this community of faith and to the wider community through organizations that support those in need. We respond with gifts of money and care what is important is that whatever you give, you do so with your whole heart, knowing that this is your response to a baby born in a manger who revealed God to us and whose life, death, and resurrection 
continue to inspire and reveal God to us. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, born in a stable, be with the poor and homeless this Christmas time. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, be with young mothers and single parents and their families across the world this Christmas time. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, visited by shepherds, be with all who have to work this Christmas Eve and Christmas time and those who long to work. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, who became a refugee, be with those who fear for their lives and those who have left homes and families this Christmas. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, bringer of hope, peace, joy, and love, be with each of us in this moment and throughout this holiday season. Bring hope to hopeless hearts, peace to violent places, joy to the fearful, angry, and despairing, and love to those who feel unworthy of love. We offer our gifts and prayers with grateful hearts for the gift of a baby so long ago. Amen. I miss him, you know, but somehow I have this strange sense that he is still close by. It's been a long time since he left us, and I seem to be telling my stories about him all the time. It's practically all I do now, apart from running after lost sheep. Still, sometimes I worry. I worry that the real meaning of the things that Jesus said and did might be getting lost as time goes by. What about you? On clear nights like these, I often think about Jesus and the way he believed the whole world could be changed by God if he dared to help it happen. I like to sing the song they say his mother sang when she found out she was pregnant. You sing this song and you know everything that Jesus was here to do. It's a battle cry, of course, but not a battle cry based on weapons and violence. Jesus did battle by understanding what people are made of on the inside the prisons in our minds, and the prisons we make for others, the lies we keep living, the cowardly things we sometimes do, the courage and love we are capable of. Jesus knew all of this about us, and he pointed the way toward God. He wanted us all to feel God's love and grow into the courageous, compassionate people that God dreamed us to be. Mary sang... My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God. For God has looked with favor on me, a lowly young woman. From now on, all generations of people will know me and bless me, for God has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who stand in awe before God's creation. God has shown strength and has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. But the lowly, humble ones, God raises up. God fills the hungry with good things, but those who are rich with earthly things God sends away empty. God turns everything upside down by choosing people who are small like me. I wish I had been there on the first Christmas night. It sounded incredible. I guess you and I will have to make do with telling the old stories, for now anyway, until we see him again. I hope you are safe in this dark, cold night. Go home now. Know that God walks with you, even on dark nights like this one. Know that you are loved.
Blessings to you and yours through this Christmas season. Please consider yourself invited to join us again for worship on Sunday, January 2nd, or online at www.youtube.com slash c slash Ansley United Church. Merry Christmas. Jesus is born. <laughs>